Welcome to this podcast for our monthly donors at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I do this once a month, and I have the honor of having Father William Wagner from the Opus Angelorum here visiting because he's doing retreat work. Father William, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Terry. <laughs> well, Father, you and I go back decades. decades. Uh, yes, I can say that honestly because I think I was a young man when I first met you, and I'm an old man now, so, okay, so that tells you something. You're just stating me indirectly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, today on this podcast for our monthly donors who have been so good to us, I wanted to give them a little treat. In, in regards to angelology and the study of angels and why it's important that we have a great devotion to our guardian angel specifically. And what does the Bible, what does the catechism have to say? So, because I think people are going to be surprised on how much angels played all through the Bible, not just in the Old or New, both Old and New Testament. So I'd like to ask you if you could just introduce people today to angelology and why it's important to us today? Uh, a very good question, a very fundamental question. And of course, you suggested our best source is scripture, and that's recapitulated for us in the catechism. Uh, but if we go back in the history of salvation, mm -hmm. you know, the bad guy's active in Genesis. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's the fall. Uh, and Abraham, his call, God calls him, and the great trial of Abraham. God orchestrates that through the angel. And that goes back then to the very fundamental reason of God in creating. He creates the world to pour forth his goodness mm -hmm. and draw creatures back to him freely through a gift of love. He creates men and angels with the gift of intellect, reason, and will. Mm -hmm. And so the great gift, and this is a statement about all of God's activity in creation— he doesn't do it unilaterally. Yeah. <laughs> the most evident thing. He could have created human beings individually. He'd rather have marriage bringing forth that life and nurturing it in the name of God with human love. Yeah. Also then, if God is going to reveal himself to creatures, he, he can't speak his own language to say divinely. He has to come down to the level of creatures to speak to creatures with human language, with human signs. And the light and grace he administers. Yeah. And that in the Old Testament is especially through the through the angels. And about our devotion, say, why should we have a devotion? Well, God commanded it. Here's Mo Moses has brought them out into the desert. They're a stubborn people, and they they still need to get through the desert to get to the promised land which God has promised them. And how does God want them to do that? And he says, see. I'm sending an angel before you mm -hmm. to guard you on the way and bring you to the place that I have prepared. So by divine choice, God wants to bring angels and men together in this search for the promised land, which is eternal life, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And then he says, be attentive to him and heed his voice. So God gives the mission to the angels to lead us and guide us, even as in the church. We have the priestly ministry, the bishops, the Holy Father, with that commission to preach the gospel. Well, the angel is preaching and guiding him on that journey. And then he says, do not rebel against him, for he will not forgive your sins. My name is in him. So God has presented the angel mm -hmm. Already in the beatific vision, wow! the angel sees God face to face. Mm -hmm. Now just think, Moses talks to God in the tent, and his face radiates the divine light, and he can go out and talk to them. But no, Moses knows that's a passing phenomenon, so he has to put on the veil. The angel sees God's face unveiled perpetually. And so he can speak in the name. God is present in the angel. So God is present in the priest. I absolve you of your sins. It's Christ acting in and through the priest. This is my body, not my body, William, but right. Jesus Christ's body. So the sacraments have this phenomena also of God acting in a most profound way mm -hmm. through creatures and demanding the cooperation with this institution of the mystery of the church. Wow. Well, in the Old Testament, the angel is that guiding figure. And then God says... If you heed his voice and carry out all I tell you, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe 
to your foes. So you say, wow, that's all I have to do? Yes. And the angel will guide us to God, the great faith. The angel, the angel sent to the Blessed Virgin, the mystery of the incarnation. And it's a very common theme. There are almost no book in the scriptures, a couple of small books that don't mention the angels. The angels are mentioned over, say, what do we see? 300 times, 400 times in Scripture, 107, over 70 wow. times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They're very significant players. They're not the principal actors, but they're always there acting. Where would we be if the angel hadn't enlightened St. Joseph? Yeah. The angels, so throughout the Scriptures, the angels are there present, guiding, and enlightening. Isaiah the prophet. Where does he get his vocation? He beholds the seraphim. So within the presence of the seraphim, he has a vision of God and God's holiness, and he's overwhelmed, and he becomes aware of his sinfulness, perfect state of contrition. But the angel comes and administers the glowing coal to free him from his imperfection. And after that angelic intervention, then God says, who can we send? And now Isaiah is ready. Send me. Mm. And what does he do? He begins to preach the virgin is going to be born. Mm. So there's a collaboration with the prophets, with the wow. angels. Moses leads the people, the judges, the angels are involved with them. <laughs> so it's, it's not just the modern world and all of these things. You know, we say, look at the world, how bad it is today. Yeah. Well, how bad was it in the time of Abraham? Very bad. How bad was it through Israel? And of course, the reason when it comes back, when we're talking about the people of God, everything went well with Israel as long as they were faithful to God, to the guiding angel, to the prophets. When they went bad, divine chastisement. When things went bad, the modern world, they've turned their back on God. It's a time to return to God. And God sends the angel again in a new way. The greatest charism, we were talking about that today, the greatest charism or apparition of the Blessed Mother in the history of the church is Fatima. Yep. Who prepares that? The angel. He teaches him to pray again. Yep. Reparation, adoration, and the angel prepares them. They're just little children. In his schooling, they, they're prepared for holiness, and the Blessed Mother comes and gives them their mission, and the world has changed. Wow. You know, one of the questions in the catechism says, who are they? You know, <laughs> the angels. And St. Augustine says an angel is the name of their office, not of their nature. Can you elaborate on that? Okay, well, by nature, they're a human being is body and soul. That's right. A rational animal. That's yeah. what we are as a human being. Yes. The angel is a pure spirit, yes. a very triumph for human thought to, to realize that there can be such a creature. Yep. So that's his nature. Yeah. Now, the word angel is in, and that's we get it in evangelization. So the Greek root is a message or the messenger. And the Greek angelos is just a direct interpretation, a very valid interpretation of the term Malak in the Old Testament, which was also a messenger. Hmm. And there in the Old Testament with the word Malak, messenger, it appears about 400 times. You can take a sword and practically cut it in half, and 50% are human messengers, yeah. and the others are God's messengers, and that's why you get the Malak Yahweh, the wow. messenger of Yahweh or the messenger of Elohim. And that tells you it's not a human messenger, it's somebody from above. Father, can we go back a little bit to, I kind of jumping all over, but. This is Jesse Romero, Catholic Lay Evangelist, and I want to thank you for watching this video on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Make sure you leave a like and a comment on the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Find out how to receive exclusive content in the description below and always remember to take the information you gathered from this video and evangelize everyone you know. Thank you.